trust sucks. <laughs> I believe this. I really do. As a hacker, I have to. However, if I were going to have a subtitle for this presentation, that subtitle would be one word, and that word would be conditionally. What a lot of people realize is that hacking and breaches occur literally on a daily basis, but what most people don't realize is that hackers are successful because of trust. Now, I understand we can't have a society or even a social contract without trust. Trust drives our morality. But we have to learn to filter our trust mechanisms because in cybersecurity, trust means vulnerability for some very serious reasons. So let's explore trust through this technological lens and see why we shouldn't be so keen to embrace it all the time. Now, if we're looking at trust, trust breaks down into two major categories, cognitive trust and effective trust. Now, Cognitive trust is based on our experience and knowledge of somebody. In our infancy, we develop this object permanence. That means we understand objects continue to exist even when they cannot be observed. And so as an example of cognitive trust exploitation, let's look at our local coffee shop. We all have some kind of local coffee shop in our lives, and we've been there 99 times. And all 99 times, we've used that free Wi-Fi. On the 100th time we walk in, our object permanence tells us that wireless is gonna be there, and our cognitive trust tells us, given all available evidence and knowledge of this coffee shop, it's going to be safe, and that's the flaw. I can run what is called an evil twin attack, spoofing that wireless. So when you walk into that 100th time, you're actually connecting to my Wi-Fi and not the coffee shop. And from there, I can steal your usernames and password, download your pictures, insert infections into your device, and a whole bunch of fun stuff. This is the flaw with cognitive trust. And we don't even have to go as far as the local coffee shop. We can look for this right in our own homes. Now, we all have internet, which means we all have an internet service provider. And that internet service provider probably has thousands, if not millions, of customers across the nation. And when you sign up for this internet service provider, they ship you a wireless router to use. Your cognitive trust tells you, well, thousands, if not millions of people are using these. It must be safe. The reality of the fact is, is that it's not. Historically, these have been shown to be consistently vulnerable and very easy for hackers to penetrate. And the internet service providers have actually been rather poor at updating them in a timely manner, leaving you vulnerable. This is the core of cognitive trust exploitation. And so if we're looking at the flip side of trust, we're looking at effective trust. Now, effective trust is born out of our emotional ties with others, including the feelings generated by our interactions. And because of effective trust, we tend to believe what people, institutions, technology providers tell us. Now, examples of this in terms of exploitation could be as easy as getting an email from a friend that says, hey, I'm stuck overseas and need cash because somebody stole my wallet. This is also known as a phishing scam. Or it could be the free email provider whose marketing swears up and down that they're not going to data mine us in violation of our privacy. This is effective trust. But effective trust goes a lot deeper. And it becomes a lot more serious because I can use effective trust to break into your life and harm you, your family, your friends, everybody around you. I can run what is called a social engineering attack. And basically what that means is I'm going to gather as much information and intelligence on you as I can. And then I'm going to build a profile and try to connect to you on social media, banking on your effective trust, banking on your emotional connections with others, banking on your nostalgia, ideally making myself a long lost friend. I'm going to know where you went to school. I'm going to know what you studied, what your family's like, what your hobbies are, and I'm going to build to that. So did you graduate from X college in the year 2000? So did I. Did you study biochemistry? So did I. And guess what? Thanks to Wikipedia, I kind of sound like I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to use these little bits of information to break into your life. This is the flaw with effective trust. And so if we're looking at trust overall from the standpoint of society as a whole, here's the thing. We're liars. We really are. In fact, according to psychology today, the average person, whether they're lying to themselves or to others, lies twice a day two times a day on average. And if we are looking at the most basic explanation and concept for lying, lying is simply this. Lying is the understanding that we have information someone else doesn't. And by virtue of this, 
we can choose to manipulate the information we give to others. Hackers rely on this to ensure our success. And so if we're breaking what a hacker does down into a single concept, it's this. We lie to you. That's it. That's all we do. And if we're breaking down all cyber threats and vulnerabilities into a single simple concept, it's trust is the real vulnerability. Now our cyber defense is only as good as our weakest vulnerability and trust is usually this. We trust that free Wi-Fi from the coffee shop. We trust that stranded friend needing money. We trust that wireless router or that data mining email provider. We trust. Now last year was the worst year ever for hacking. In fact, we had over 2,200 reported breaches by major organizations and institutions worldwide, totaling over 6 billion records exposed. And that 2,200 number is a mere fraction of the actual breaches out there because most go unreported. Oh, and that 2,200 number is for the first six months of last year. And this year, this year we are far on track to exceed that. So how do we, as a society, combat this massive vulnerability that is trust? We must create a new filter of distrust for our thinking. And with this new filter, we must apply a second factor of authentication to our thought process. So for example, is that stranded friend really stuck overseas? Maybe I should pick up a phone and verify that before I actually send the cash. And finally, we mustn't shun critical thinking. We cannot use faith in our cybersecurity logic. Now, faith may be a virtue where trust plays heavily, but in technology, faith will get you hacked. So please, join me in my distrust of everyone and everything online. It's surprisingly a lot more relaxing than you may think. Thank you.